Hey there! Have you just started using Quiller and wondering where to begin? Well, you're in the right place! Hi again, and welcome to our Quiller Academy! No matter how intuitive a product is, learning something new is never easy, which is why I'm here to help. So, how does Quiller work? Imagine this is your Quiller page. It's built of all these different parts called blocks. It starts with one block and then add more and more blocks to build up your page. Each block can contain different content like text, images, videos, tables, and more. Here's how a finalized Quiller page looks like. Oh right! Sorry about that! Pretty cool, huh? So let's take a closer look at how Quilla works. Okay, let's start from the very beginning. When you log into your Quilla account, this is what you'll see. This is your account dashboard, a place where all pages you and your team create are stored. From here, you can organize your pages, search for the page needed, as well as create new pages. Before we dive into creating pages, let's check out what's under account settings and make sure we have everything set up. From here, you'd be able to manage internal sharing settings, change your email and password, invite your team members and manage their permissions, manage your subscription and notifications, as well as connect Quilla with other tools. All these settings are available to an account admin. If you are a creator, reach out to your account admin to have this set up. From here, you can also set up your brand settings. So let's do that before we start creating our pages. Once you open the brand editor, you'll see this palette. You'd be able to add up to seven different colors for your brand, and if you update these colors later, they will automatically update for all of your pages. As for fonts, you can add a different font for your headings, subheadings, and regular text. And the last thing here, you're going to want to set up your custom subdomain. By default, all of the Quiller page links start with pages.quiller.com, so you'd be able to change that pages part to your company name or something else. And if you're on an enterprise plan, you can set up your custom domain here too and white label your links. Check out our Help Center for more instructions on how to do this. All right, now that we're all set up, let's go ahead and create a first page. There are essentially two ways to create a new Quiller page, from a template or a blank page. For the purposes of this video, I'll go ahead and start with a new page, but I'd suggest setting up a template too as it will save a lot of time for you and your team when creating new pages for your clients. Check out this video on how you can streamline your sales process with saved content here. So once you start a new page, you'll see a Quiller editor open. This is where all the magic happens and your static documents turn into beautiful web pages. Let's take a quick look at what we have here. In the top left corner, you will be able to name your proposal. Let's go ahead and do that now. Don't worry, you'll be able to change it at any time. In the right corner, you'll be able to preview your page, share it with your team, download a PDF copy, and turn the page into a CRM template if needed. By default, all Quilla pages are live, but no one will be able to access them unless they have a direct link. Go ahead and switch this toggle off in case you'd like to turn this page off and remove access from someone who you already shared this page with. Remember I mentioned how Quiller pages are built of different blocks? Well, there are six different blocks that you can use, and each has its specific purpose. To add a new block, simply click anywhere where you see this button, and then click on the block you need. I'll go ahead and start with a splash block. Splash blocks are beautiful background blocks that will help you wow your clients. You can select either an image or a video as your background. I'll go ahead and select the image option, and from here, either select one of the free images in the library or upload your own. Great! 
We now have a beautiful block that starts our proposal. Let's add some text here. To do this, type anywhere where you see this plus icon, or if you don't see one, hit enter or return on your keyboard to add one. Before we move on and add our next block, let's check out what's under this icon here. In general, everywhere where you see this icon, it means that you can style this part of content. It can be either the whole block, text, a table, a quote, and more. And once you click on it, you'll see all styling options available. So for example, for the splash block, you'd be able to change the overlay color, adjust block width and spacing, and also add a background card. As for these settings here, you'll see them in every block and will be able to turn on navigation, make the block foldable, save this block, and delete it. And these buttons here will help you move your block up and down the page as well as clone it within the page. All right, let's move on to our text block. Text blocks are essentially blocks that you use when you need to add, well, text. But in addition to text, you'd also be able to add images, videos, tables, and maps. Let's go ahead and click here to add some text and see what we can do with it. Great, now that we have text, I'd like to style it a bit. To do this, you'd want to highlight the text and you will see this toolbar. From here, you can switch the heading style, bold this text, or italicize it, add a hyperlink, turn it into an unordered list or an ordered list, or switch into a quote mode. To switch the color or the size of the text, as well as its alignment, click on this paint roller icon and you will see all available options. For more tips and tricks on how to style your content, check out our help center. Now that my text is styled, I'd like to change the color of the block. To do this, head to the block styling menu and choose a new color for the block from this palette here. You'll also be able to set a one-time color by pasting a hex code for the color needed. You will also see the color of your text automatically adjust based on the color of your block to make sure it's readable. As I've mentioned before, you'd be able to add other content to your blocks besides text. Everywhere you see this plus icon here, you can click on it to add an image, video, table, two columns, or embed a Google map. To add an inline image, click on this option here, or you can simply drag the image from your computer and drop it into your Quilla page. You can also copy the image and then paste it into your Quilla page like this. Once you add your image, you can resize it by clicking on and dragging one of these blue dots here. You can also replace it with another image, change its frame, alignment, or add a link to it. As for the video, simply select the video option and paste in the link to your video. You'll be able to add video from any of our supported providers. And once the video is added, you can resize it the same way you can resize images. The next thing that you can add here is a table. By default, you'll see a table added with two rows and two columns, but you can add more by clicking on this plus icon anywhere where you'd like to add a row or a column. To style the table, click on it to bring up the style option. From here, you can change the top row and background colors, border type and color, as well as border transparency. To learn more about using tables, check out the article in our Help Center. Now, let's check out our two-column widget. Once you've added the widget, you'll see one empty column and one for adding an image. Let's add some text here and add an image here. You can either click on this placeholder to add an image or drag and drop it like we learned a bit early in this video. If you'd like to swap these two columns, click on this button here to do it. In case you'd like to resize the widget, click and drag one of these blue dots here. You can then go ahead and add more images and text to both columns. Oh hey, tired yet? Well, we have a couple of more Legos, <clears throat> blocks, to take a look at. Now, we've added an inline video before, but we also have a whole separate block that you can use to add a video. Once you added this block, simply paste in the link 
choose the size for a video block and click see it. And that's it! Just like with other blocks, you can change the block background, add text and other content here. Let's check out our embed block now. With this block, you can add almost any content that's hosted online onto your Quilla page. Whether it is your calendar, a Google Sheet, or a survey, anything that supports an iframe embed can be added into your Quilla page. You'll see some of the options to choose from, but if you don't see one, go ahead and use the iframe embed option. For the purposes of this video, let's go ahead and embed a calendar. I'm using Calendly, so to do this, I'll grab a link to my calendar here, and then select the Calendly option, paste the link here, and that's it. We've created guides on how to embed other content, so go ahead and check out our help center. Next up is our quote block. When you add a quote block, you'll see one section with one fixed price line item. To add more sections, click on this plus icon here, and to add more line items, click on one of the options here. You can then name the sections by typing here and add your pricing by adding description here and setting the price here. As for the block settings, you will be able to change the currency, turn your sections into packages, control whether you'd like to show the quote total in section IDs or not, turn decimals on and off, translate the standard fields in the quote block, and manage taxes. Quotes are pretty powerful. So to show you all of the ins and outs of the quote block, we have a dedicated video you can check out here. Before sharing your proposal, the last important block that you need to add is our accept block. This block contains an accept button that your client will be able to click to accept your offer. In addition to all styling options available that I've mentioned before, here you'd also be able to style the button. You can change its color, alignment, as well as the text that's on it. As for the settings in the blog, you'll be able to control whether you'd like to show the quote total in the acceptance email, add and update the text that your customers see as soon as they accept the proposal, as well as add additional questions to the acceptance form. Here you can also enable eSign and even prefill signees' names, as well as integrate with Stripe and accept payments. To see what the acceptance process is going to look like for your customer, Click on the Accept button while being in the editor, and then on this icon here, and you'll arrive on the test page. From here, you can fill out the form and complete the acceptance process without actually accepting the page. We've created a guide for you to show everything that can be done with our Accept block, and I recommend checking it out for more information. Once you're done and ready to share your masterpiece, click on this Share button and then copy the link. You can then paste it into your message and send it to your customer. Once your client opens the page for the first time, you'll get a notification and you will see the page view number change. To learn more about when your customer viewed the page, how long they spent viewing it, and which blocks they spend most time on, head to the analytics section of your page. Are you excited yet? Great! Now you'll want to go ahead and start creating your own awesome pages. Trust me, your clients are going to think that you have a whole team of developers and designers creating your offers. And if you feel stuck at any point, click the Help button in your account and our amazing support team will be happy to help. And in the description to this video, you'll find links to all resources that you'll need to help you get started. Cheers! And I'll see you in our next video!